The iPadOS 14 public beta is here. Now this is much more of refinement than a major sweeping upgrade to the whole OS. This fixes a lot of like low hanging fruit and just a lot of little things. So I wanted to take some time and do kind of an overview of some features. I'm still gonna be doing a big walkthrough when it publicly releases later this year. The iPad didn't get major changes to the home screen like the iPhone did. The iPhone got the ability to place widgets anywhere, the app library, and the ability to hide home screen. The iPad did get the new widget style, but they're still stuck to the left-hand column. When adding widgets, there are different sizes to pick from. The larger the widget, the more information it can display. On the iPad, there is a gray 2x2 grid. This is for the pinned favorite widgets. I'm a little bummed to see this is such a small area, especially for the iPad Pros that have larger displays. You have enough real estate there to see more. You can add widgets under the gray block, but you do have to swipe up on the column to see them. But not all is lost. When adding widgets, you can add a smart stack. This will automatically rotate between widgets iPadOS thinks you would like to see at a certain point in your day. You can also custom make these smart stacks by dragging and dropping widgets on top of each other. I have been using a 2x1 widget to display information I want to see, and another one to rotate between shortcuts. A big theme of iPadOS 14 is understanding the iPad is a much larger canvas than the iPhone. The first place we see this is with search. Before search would take up the whole display. Now the UI is a lot more like Spotlight on the Mac. I think this is a huge improvement. You can still add apps to split view from search. For shortcuts that run from search and the widget, they don't have to open the shortcuts app anymore. If you have a menu or list action, this will just show up in a notification you can interact with. And if you have an ask for input action, you can type right in the box without ever going into the app. It makes it a lot quicker and easier to use shortcuts like adding stuff to a task manager or calendar. Siri also got some design improvements. It now just shows up in the bottom right hand corner. It will display text results as a bubble right above it. I'm really happy to see Apple is realizing that everything that runs on the iPad doesn't need to take up the whole display. Continuing that thread, some of the built-in apps got upgrades. Apps like Photos and Music got a sidebar added to them. This makes navigating those apps so much quicker. You can even edit what appears in those sidebars. When those apps get put into split view or slide over, they go back to having the navigation buttons at the bottom. Others like files and calendars got support for the new toolbar design. Before, to change the view in files, you had to swipe down to even see that button. Now there's a spot at the top with all those options. When you tap on it, you get a drop down menu and you can pick the option from there. This is an evolution of the contextual menus from iPadOS 13. Apple's other productivity apps like Reminders and Notes got a few minor upgrades as well. In Reminders, you can now use emojis for project symbols. There's also a section to see tasks that are assigned to you. And Notes got the best upgrade ever. No more paper texture backgrounds. I'm going to be switching to the whole Apple productivity app suite for the summer, and I'll be doing a video on how they worked for me and everything that's new in them. Shortcuts got a ton of new features. I already talked about running shortcuts from the widget and search, but there is now folders in shortcuts as well. These are great, especially if you have a large library of shortcuts. When working on a shortcut, the editor is now on the right hand side. I think this is a bit strange since everywhere else the panel is on the left side, but now you can copy and paste actions from a shortcut. Just long press on the action icon and you'll get a menu. Hit copy, then scroll to another action, long press, and you can paste it above or below. You can even copy and paste actions across different shortcuts. Shortcuts also now has support for multi-window. So if you're working on a shortcut, you can have two different versions of the shortcuts app up at once so you can reference each other. And shortcuts automation got a big improvement. Some triggers like the time trigger no longer require a confirmation via a notification. You could turn that off when making the automation. Others like location, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth still require that confirmation. I'm not sure what the logic is behind some triggers requiring it and others not. During the keynote, the Apple Pencil got the most screen time for the iPad. When drawing a shape in an app like Notes, now you can long press for a second and it'll fix that shape to make it look perfect. 
This is amazing for somebody like me that can't draw. Also, when handwriting text, you can now select it. This means you can cut, copy, paste, move it around, change the color, and more. It essentially gets treated as if you typed it from a keyboard. Apple also brought Scribble to the iPad. In any standard text box, you can now handwrite out text and it will convert it to type text. So I can be in messages and handwrite out a text, or I can write out an email with the Apple Pencil. I can even do this for a Google search. This is huge for people that don't want a keyboard on their iPad. It also shows Apple is embracing the modularity of the iPad. To wrap things up, I wanna cover a couple of things really quickly. So first off, there is a new 4K codec that both Apple and Google are supporting. So that means we are finally getting 4K YouTube on the iPad and Apple TV and things like that. On the iPad, it, I don't think it makes that big of a difference because the displays aren't 4K uh, yet, hopefully soon. But uh, I mean, it does mean we get to watch stuff at a higher resolution, so that's great. But for the, like, the 4K Apple TV, that's where it's really gonna be nice. Also, you're gonna be able to set default mail and web browser apps. This is really cool, I'm really excited about this. This is something third-party apps will have to upgrade to support, so I haven't got a chance to try out how it works just yet. I'm gonna be doing a deep dive walkthrough into iPad OS 14. I've got a lot of other really cool stuff planned over the summer, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, it really does help out, and thank you guys so much for watching.